Welcome back. I have missed getting to talk to y'all and laugh with y'all and learn with y'all. And um, I've gotten to talk to you, some of you over the last week and hear about the projects that you've been working on and the skills that you're learning over this time and just kind of hearing about what you've been doing with your time off. Um, and I'm impressed with those of you who are really taking advantage of this time to just learn stuff and that's awesome. Today's video is going to be a little bit shorter than most of the future videos because we're going to focus on um, what school is going to look like from here on and, and I'm going to be explaining how things are going to work and then at the end I'll do a little bit of actual chemistry with you. So let's get started. I've recorded a bunch of videos of me teaching and I've uploaded them to the school's YouTube channel and um, I'll send that link to you the night before around 5 p.m. and then you'll have a chance to watch that video. As you're watching that video, make sure you're writing down notes, um, writing down questions that you have, maybe drawing pictures if you need them, um, but really get as much information from that video as you can. And take note of anything that might confuse you because in the classroom, if I was teaching, I'd be able to see your face and see that look of confusion on your face, but here I don't get to do that. So I'm really relying on you to keep track of what you don't know, what you don't understand, because every day at 2.30, we're going to meet together as a class through Zoom, and this will be your chance to ask questions. The key thing here is I'm not teaching. You're asking questions, you're seeking clarification, and I'll be able to explain from there. All right. Sometimes I'll use this time as um, time to do a demonstration or play a game with you, but uh, maybe we'll do practice problems, but mostly it's going to be you asking questions, me explaining. And today's Q&A is going to be about um, how Google Classroom is going to work, how I'm going to use it. I'm sure most of you already know how to use Google Classroom, but it's really just going to be a chance for me to explain what I plan to do with it, maybe walk you through some of this, the features that I have set up and show you where I plan to put things. So let's get started. Before Christmas, we talked about ionic and molecular compounds. And when we were talking about them, we were really focusing on the rules for naming each type of compound. And we're about to start moving into solutions now. These, these differences between the two types of compounds are going to be important because they determine whether or not an, a compound dissolves in solution or not. And we're going to review the differences right now. Let's look at ionic compounds. Ionic compounds or ionic bonds form between a metal and a nonmetal. Okay, and your periodic table was labeled with this um, back close to the beginning of the year. We drew a stair-step line. Everything on this side of the stair-step is a metal. Everything on this side of the stair-step is a non-metal. We've got some things that hug this stair-step that possess properties of both metals and non-metals, and those are what we call metalloids. Okay, we're gonna focus on just metals and non-metals right now. We're going to start by looking at sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is table salt. Okay, and these two are going to be attracted to each other and share or transfer electrons based on the octet rule. Okay, they're going to try and form a set of eight valence electrons. Remember, those valence electrons are the electrons that are on the outermost shell. Okay, and we can figure that out based on the periodic table. Sodium over here is under group 1, and it's also labeled 1A. That 1A tells us that it has one valence electron. Okay, chlorine over here is under group 17, and it's also labeled 7A. That 7 tells us that chlorine has seven valence electrons. Okay, now they're going to try and form a set of 8 and they're gonna do whatever's easiest. For sodium, its options are to give away one or to take seven, okay? Um, and whatever is easier. Chlorine could either give away seven or take one. It's easier for it to take one and it's easier for sodium to give away one. So it'll transfer that electron over there. And when that happens, it now has an imbalance of protons and electrons. Sodium has 11 protons and 10 electrons. Okay, that means it's gonna have a positive one charge now because it's got one extra proton than it does electrons. 
Okay, that doesn't mean it gained a proton. That just means now it's got, if we were to um, line them all up and cancel each other out, we would have one proton that doesn't have a partner. Okay, with chlorine, a similar thing has occurred. It has 17 protons, but now that it's taken an electron away from sodium, it has 18 electrons. Okay, again, if we were to line up the protons and electrons next to each other, we would have one, uh, one electron that is unpaired. Okay, we've got one extra electron giving chlorine a charge of negative one. Okay, now let's look at a salt crystal. There's not actually a bond that forms between sodium and chlorine. Um, they're just attracted to each other based on those charges that they now have. Okay, so in a salt crystal, we would have positive sodium ions, and they're going to want to line up next to negative chloride ions. And so again, we put another sodium, another chloride, another chloride would want to be here. Okay, and I have this actually hanging in the classroom. It's the one that looks like a cube. Um, and so we could we could draw lines in between them, um, but th this is how they would be attracted to each other, but these lines are not actual bonds, okay? Because again, the electrons are given away from sodium to chlorine, okay? Sodium is no longer using it. Chlorine is the only one using it. And that's really the key thing to remember with ionic bonds or ionic compounds. Electrons are given away from one to another. So now we're gonna look at a covalent bond or a molecular compound. Covalent bonds occur inside of a molecular compound. And they consist of just nonmetals. So an example of this type of bond would be carbon dioxide. As you know, carbon dioxide has two oxygen atoms and one carbon atom. And the way this bonds is it's gonna look like this. We've got six valence electrons on oxygen. And I know that because it's under group 6A here. And then carbon has four valence electrons. It's under group 4A. And you'll notice that I'm drawing these Lewis dot structures a little bit differently because I'm trying to show you how, how these electrons are, are shared between the two. All right, these electrons are gonna be shared by both carbon and oxygen. Oxygen is gonna use them, carbon is also gonna use them. In ionic compounds, those electrons are given away. In this case, they're not being completely given away, carbon also needs them. So it's gonna use those electrons at the same time as oxygen is using them. These electrons will, will float back and forth between the two. We'll spend some time with oxygen, we'll spend some time with carbon, but the key thing here is in a covalent bond, electrons are being shared. Okay, those electrons are spending time between both atoms. All right, hopefully while you were watching that video, you were able to write down some things that uh, were maybe confusing to you and you were able to take note of those definitions that I gave you, maybe copy down those examples and because um, you're gonna need that information for a quick little comprehension check that you'll do after you finish this video. Um, we're going to have a chance to discuss this a little bit further in our Q&A session, but today's Q&A session is really gonna focus on how to use Google Classroom and how to navigate that for this class. And um, if you have any questions, make sure you wrote those down and you, you've got those ready for our Q&A session later today. All right, have a good day. See you later.